Hi, and welcome to the second video in a series of MathCamp for Jewelry. In this video, we will cover positioning of the geometry as well as adding supports for milling. So now that you have your MathCamp options configured, you bring in your model, whether from Rhino or from an external application using STL, OBJ, or other formats. And you can see it in a 3D space. It might be oriented in a different fashion. For example, it might be lying flat on the x, y axis, like this. Um, it might be upwards, it might be at some other angle. You need to know how it will look um, in your actual milling machine before you start cutting so that your operations are performed correctly. To do this, you need to, do, you need to take three steps. You need to do select all of the geometry, click select surfaces, poly surfaces command, uh, select or load the cutter and then click the simulate button. If you do not do these first two steps you will not be able to access the simulate option. So let's say you have your ring position this way. If you are on a four axis mill this might be a perfectly acceptable position. Um, you might be able to do a rotary job on this ring. However for a five axis we need this ring to be sticking upwards. So the bottom of the shank should be closest to the chuck. So we will rotate it by 90 degrees. That's not quite right. We don't want it upside down, so let's put it right side up. And reselect it. We do not need to reselect the cutter the second time. We just need to reselect and use the first command for selecting of uh, poly surfaces. And click simulate again. Now we can see that the ring is positioned correctly and it's looking upwards away from the chuck. This is almost what we want it to be with uh, one exception. If you look at where this ring starts right now, um, it's about negative 9 on the Y and that's a bit too close to the chuck. It's maybe even colliding with it. So we want to move that up. Let's say we'll move it up 25 millimeters. And now you'll see that the geometry here starts at 15, as you can see here. So, once again, reselecting this, performing this MadCam select command and clicking simulate, you'll see now that the ring is raised but a bit higher. So, this will allow us to move this arm in, in this case an A axis a very steep angle and be able to access say areas underneath or within the shank and cut them out without any issues of collision with the chuck or the arm itself. Now we need to add a support to this ring. Um, supports in milling are quite a bit more simple than they are in growing. Uh, they're really there to give the machine some part of the wax to hold on to as we're milling out the model. This part can be removed as the last stage of the milling or it can be left as a sprue for casting. In this case we're just going to add a simple one sprue to the bottom here. So we drew a line from the center of this bottom shank and we will use a pipe command leaving default options, um, but just perhaps making it a little thicker using the gumball transform, so make it somewhat larger like so. Now reselect again, click the simulate, and then there is our ring with a support. You will notice that it's still kind of floating in space above the chuck. That's not an issue, we're not concerned with anything really below this uh, sprue or support. So we will not be cutting this area, therefore whatever stock of wax we have that's kind of going to be encompassing this um, piece initially is just going to be left alone. We, we simply don't care what happens here. We will only be interested in stuff that's within this bounded box that's shown by the green lines here. So now our model is correctly positioned. It's supported by a sprue or a support, that's this orange bit, 
and we're just about ready to cut. Next, we will discuss the approaches to milling in general and then discuss specific strategies that we can use to cut out the string. Thank you for watching.